welcome to another Descalatiata. Today we're going to be taking it pretty chill. We're just going to continue what we were working on a couple days ago, at least what I was working on a couple days ago, which is making an at Sam R based uh, feather. It's um, a chip that is by Atmel. It uh, combines an at Sam D21 Cortex M0 Plus processor, same processor used in the Arduino Zero, with an at 89 RF233. 2.4 gigahertz transceiver. It's pretty cool. It can do stuff like six low pan and like uh, Zigbee 802.15.4. So good for, you know, you don't want something Wi Fi, you want something much lower power, maybe do some mesh network action. It's all good stuff. Um, and uh, I started the process a couple days ago. I kind of I gutted out a, uh, sorry, I did the Eagle CAD uh, object for the ATSAM R21 and I put it in place. Um, and I just cleaned up the power and ground and then I actually did a couple things. I'm, I'm just going to show what I did uh, to finish uh, assigning the pins. And now I'm just going to kind of basically add the Balin maybe antenna and route while looking at the eval board just to see like what they did and make sure I got that all good to go. And then I'll send out protos and there'll probably be a mistake. And then I'll figure out that mistake and then I'll send out another set of protos. Probably by the third rev, I'll get it solid. So it's, it's a process. It's like a... It's like a river. You're gonna go down the river of, of making multiple prototypes until you get your design right. That's how you do it. A river of copper. Yes, like a, a flowing future. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so let's go to my computer because we don't have any hardware yet. We're still designing it. And here is the. Uh, this is just I got the brochure for the Sam R21. So. M0 with 802.15.4 wireless MCU. Um, and it's kind of nice because basically I already have working core and components and everything for uh, the Feather M0, which is uses, you know, basically it's, it's a similar chip. Um, we did yesterday, we went through and we um, made the Eagle Cat object. It's also a really cute little 32 pin one which is like super teeny. Maybe one day we'll do something with this. I just think it's adorable. It's just like, it's, it must be so small. Maybe good for wearables or um, small embedded sensors. This shows you what's going on here. Um, it doesn't actually show the RF system here. It's kind of weird. They kind of, I think maybe it's too integrated, but for example, like normally there's six circoms, but one's missing. The one that's missing is the one that is used to tie um, the, uh, at Sam D21 core with the at 89 RF233 core. Um, yeah, you can go through the hardware timers, all that stuff. Um, and then here is another thing. It just t tells you about the transceivers. So, um, oh, this is for the, the all the transceivers. They have so the 212. They have multiple frequencies. But the one that we're using is the at 86 RF233. Uh, looks like 4 dBm transmit power, which is okay. Um, comes with some mesh software stack. So you can, you can do that as well. It comes with software. You can do Zigbee. Great. Um, so I wanted to, um, looking at the eval board. So I'm, I kind of like looking at eval boards when I design um, with a chip because like they kind of did a bunch of work. So like, let's just kind of look at what they did. Um, I mean, there's not, I'm not going to see too much going on here, but um, it's nice just to make sure like, you know, what, how they connect the Balin and stuff, which we're going to have to do. Maybe we'll get to today. And then if there's any weird components or anything, looks like there was some reset button here. Everything's kind of brought out. Um, they have a 60 megahertz crystal and they have a 32 uh, kilohertz crystal as well. So we have to add 32 kilohertz crystal we already have. Um, we're not gonna have an RF switch. It's gonna just go with a ceramic antenna. I actually already stock this part, so it's kind of nice. So all we have to do is add this inductor and this capacitor. And then we also have to get this balon, which I might already have as well, because we didn't use that in a previous project. Um, I think we were going to like hand make an NRF 51822. We ended up not doing it. Uh, looks like he uses the SPX 3819, which I do stock, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use um, AP 2112 instead. It's kind of similar to this 
TPS 2112, maybe. But it looks like 500 milliamps. Doesn't really say what the current draw is. Let me see. Just says provide five volts. Well, we'll we'll, we'll figure out what the, the current draw is. This is a layout. You can see kind of how they laid stuff out. Um, so let's go to, oh, this is leftover. Um, do you want to answer some questions as we go real time? Yeah, sure. All right, did the data sheets usually give you antenna designs or do you have to make those yourself? That's a really good question. Um, so the thing about antenna design is, you know, with something like this, where you're going to want to take it through FCCC um, certification for intentional, second, for intentional emitter, the antenna and and the the front end to the antenna is um, part of the certification process. And so there's some modules like the CC3000 where um, the antenna that we put on the shield and the breakout board um, matched the same exact layout components and antenna as specified in the data sheet. And because of that, um, you basically get to like use or like, you're not gonna guarantee, because there's like no guarantees in life, because it depends on like, you know, how the thing is built. But basically you can say like, look, you know, we're doing exactly the same thing as the data sheet. And so um, you will know that this will pass FCCC certification. You don't have to worry about that because you're using the exact same parts. Um, with some modules, if you, uh, use the same antenna, exact same antenna design, you kind of basically get to reuse their um, FCC certification. Um, I mean, it depends, of course, on like, what else is going on in your design. But uh, if there is an antenna um, specified, you should use it. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the same, um, to the best of my ability, the same layout. I'm not going to use this analog switch, but I'm going to use the same components for all of this. So um, you've got this chip here. Like, this is way bigger than I'm going to use um, the space. I don't need this much space because I'm not going to have a switch. I'm just going to have an antenna on board an antenna to make it small. But, um, uh, you know, basically re recycle, reuse this layout as best as possible. You know, these component size and, and, and part numbers as much as possible. Because if they took this through FCC certification, it just means I, I have less chance of when I, I'm gonna have to go through the whole certification process, it'll be a lot easier for me to do so. So if there is a, a suggestion for antenna, use it, it's a good idea. Um, or if you don't, just be aware you might have to um, do different stuff. Sometimes modules come with antennas on them. Uh, in this case, there is a module for this chip, but it won't fit in the feather layout, so no trade-offs. So um, what I did yesterday after, um, I had a couple minutes, and so what I did is um, a lot of chip, a lot of pins were not around for, actually let me see if I can, I'm gonna copy this and then I will, um, actually, no, nah, I don't wanna revert it. I was gonna do some git revert, but I'm not going to. Um, there's a bunch of pins that are not available. For example, um, the RX and TX uh, pins, D0 and D1 were not available. And so instead, what I did is over here, these two pins are usually on serial five, which is uh, one of the serial com modules. So I reassigned this to be D0 and D1. So I'm basically gonna have to go into the Arduino file and basically remux the pins. So these pins got remuxed. Um, it was also A0, A1, A2 were missing, but some pins that were not being used for anything or were not brought out. Um, this pin, which is also analog input 16, this pin, analog input 17, and this pin, analog input 11, I kind of also redirected those and said, okay, well, you know, they're not going to be the exact same pins as the M0 or the, uh, the 0 because I'm, I'm muxing different pins in, but at least they're analog inputs, so it's like the, the basic function is there. Now, unfortunately, there's no DAC output on this chip, which is kind of a little annoying. Maybe they use it for tuning or something. So DAC's not available, a little sad. Um, and then I also reassigned the um, SPI to be, because the main SPI is actually taken to communicate between the Cortex-M0 and the RF chip. So what I did is I kind of reassigned you still have I squared C on CIRCOM 3. CIRCOM 4 is right out. Or it's taken by the radio SPI. So instead, I grabbed CIRCOM 2 for SPI and just assigned it here. 
and um, CIRCOM 5 is now the main UART. So you only have you only have two other CIRCOMs and they're, they're kind of difficult to use, but eh, it's better than nothing. Okay, so what I didn't get to do is I want to put a crystal here. So let me um, let me look in the micro builder library and see. I think we have we have a ton of small crystals. I gotta just figure out which which size I can fit in. And the good news is actually I have a quite a bit of space. So two by six, no, too big. I think either one of these is fine. I think I'm gonna do 3235. 3225 is pretty good. And then. Now, I'm gonna tell you how annoying this is. I, I'm gonna work on this little um, time lapse video thing. Uh -huh. So I think it's gonna beep a bunch. So okay. we'll do the best we can. That's cool. And beep. Well, my eagle cat's beeping too, so it's kind of good. So just put this crystal in. Twenty-two beaker fire is about right. I'll I'll tweak that later. Okay. So the only thing that's annoying is most of the pads are the same. So let me get rid of the ground plane because it's always annoying to have it in the way. And then I'm going to turn off T place. So the good news is that, like, as you can see, a lot of these traces, because I just, I, get, I pulled the old one out. So a lot of these traces are, are pretty close. So that's kind of nice. So like these, and you can see like this, this got rearranged, but it's not too bad. But I still want to move this chip out because honestly, I have a ton of space. So like, why, why not? Like I don't have as much proto area and I'm, I'm cool with that. So I'm just gonna move, and then it'll, there'll be a little bit more space here. And uh, let me just kind of grab this and move this out. I mean, this is a ton of space, but I don't see why not. And then, this is gonna be kind of interesting. I wanna keep the um, SWD pins over here. Don't want to rip up the whole thing, but I am gonna kind of rip up this. Okay. Yay. And then let me get an antenna in here and maybe I'll just build backwards. Two, four, five, zero. I don't know if this is the same. This is two four five zero BM fifteen A. see what the part number is. Whoa, stop. Okay, it is 2450BM15A. Zero, zero, 002 and that's 0015E. Zero, zero, e. But maybe it's the same package. Oh no! Here it is. I got. I got. I've got these. Okay. Well, a couple options. Okay. Let's use this. There you go. And then let's. I don't want to use the exact same antenna. I'm going to use a slightly better one. Although. Maybe I should just use, oh, I'll use this one. Okay, and then ground, ground, ground. Let's check the rest of the schematic. Okay, so looks like RF negative goes into Pin four. 
sorry, positive goes to pin four, and then negative goes to pin three. RFN pin three. And then the balanced output thing is I don't know if I need let's see, this gets switched. Maybe I just need a capacitor, capacitor and inductor. I have 402 capacitor and capacitor inductor. Okay. Actually, let me check what size these parts are. They suggest 0201. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Oh. Done it before. Can do it again. Capacitor. So this is twenty two picofarads. Okay, and then there was one to ground, and then there was an inductor. and then this antenna. Man, it is hard to route boards at 720p. Go. And then once I have this, I can kind of, you know, figure out, I can work backwards. Was it uh, 1.8 picofarads? Sorry, 1.2 picofarads, 1.8 nanohenry. Okay. All right. Turn on T place just to get the placement. Good. Put the antenna there. Look at this ridiculously small capacitor and inductor. I might go 40402. These are kind of ridiculous like we we do o201s but like i don't know i think they're too small i'm going to change the 402s i'll deal with the consequences anyways i'm not going to be able to prototype with uh o201s where is that's weird 402. Yeah, look at look at how huge a 402 is looking. Those are tiny. But yeah, I don't want to do 02 ones. Maybe some other day. So this is just like a rough, rough idea. K-Town does a lot better with the uh, RF layout, so I'll leave that for him. That's nice, this is actually kind of nice, kind of a nice little triangle. And then we'll just, we'll tuck this right in here. That's cute, there you go. Yeah, nice little even. Okay, so it gives us tons and tons of space. Wow, so much space. Too much space, perhaps. Um, so now I just route this out. It's a route and party. I can put the crystal here. this? Did I not connect these? Oh, wow. I didn't watch out for that. Okay. K 
Okay, got the crystal over here. Maybe push this up. Okay. And then this crystal's gotta move too. This crystal goes, oh man, there's too many crystals. This one goes here. Actually, maybe um, put this one here. Maybe I'll bring this one over here. Give myself a little room for these pads. And then this has some capacitors that go with it. Tons of space though, totally cool. Stick it over here. Looks pretty good. All right, I think I'm just gonna get routing. Are there any other questions or is it time for a routing party? I think you should route. Let's route. Not for like a couple minutes. I mean, like I don't. I'm not gonna finish. This is like a. I can kind of tell. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a route, route and job. But can can get some of these uh, in place. If you want to get like nice clean lines, go from the QFN out. That way you don't have to worry about the grid because like sometimes your grid is in a different. Um, alignment than uh, QFN. And then I want to use 19 mil holes. You know, one time I was like, oh, I'm totally going to use 15 mil. And you know what? It worked, but I had PCB failures. So I try to stick to 19 these days. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a ton of routing. I can just I can already tell. Yeah, all of these gotta go. You gotta go. You. You can stay. You gotta go. I don't want to rip up the whole thing, but I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to have to rip up the whole thing. Some like calming background music or something. Well, excuse me. Okay. Maybe. Since you build a work at home, how do you keep the instances of the software and parts and projects synced? Just Dropbox? I use I just use Dropbox for everything. Yeah, this is. Do yeah, this is syncing. Well, right now I'm still working, but it will it'll sync and yeah, then I. By the time I go to bed and wake up, it's it's all synced up, and then I'm um, pretty much ready to rock. Let me see. I'd say tools like Dropbox have significantly changed how we work in the last two years. Yeah, totally. Yeah, these are all just slightly out of order. I will. I will make sure that this all is super happy later, but I'll just get it planar and then I'll fix it. That's why it's like, hey, you know, those traces are running in. I know, they're running into each other. It's fine. Okay. This is, are these really all out of order? One, two, three. 
totally out of order. Annoying. Okay. That's those. And you know what? Actually, if I have these, I'm going to pull this back. Let me look. How do they lay it out? It looks like they put the valen close, but then the antenna far away. So I can put this in, but keep this back out here. What's the minimal distance between a trace you can have? It depends on uh how you're routing your boards um usually six mil is pretty common these days like six mil six mil i actually go with um eight mil eight mil but what i really try to do is 10 mil because it's kind of one of those things where it's like let yourself have a little bit um of extra space and um then when you get to the end and you realize that you have to change something, you can um, you can relax the rule a little bit. Are these completely? I would like to switch this. This is miso. Mostly S clock, so I would like it to be. Let's see if I can change this pin setup because this doesn't have to be in any particular order. Let's go to my circom. Oh, Is there a limit to the number of vias you should have on a trace? You know, I I really don't do more than two or three. It, sometimes if you really have a, a squirrely one, you can put like five, but you know, minimize, minimize, usually there's something you can do. Once I get to the point where there's too many vias, if I'm going up and down too many times, I actually just clean up that space and redo it. And when, the, when I do it a second time, it always it comes up clean. Okay, so I want to we still use the circum, but I want to, since I have the flexibility, I want to arrange these so they route nicely. So I'm going to make S clock is the same pin, but can I swap Mosi and Miso? Let's find out. Go here. Right now I have S clock on pad one. And Mosi on pad zero, but I want to put it on pad two. Can I do that? Yes, my S clock on one. No, I get S clock on one and SPI on pin three, but that's not available. Ah, uh, looks like I'm stuck. Okay. I was hoping I could rearrange the pins, but uh, no such luck. So I will I'll have to be a little clever. What's an auto router? Um, an auto router is a tool that will do this work for you very badly, which is why I don't use the auto router. But for very simple things, it may work. I don't even have the auto router available. So even if I wanted to, it's not, um, it's not installed. Whoa. Hello. Let me select. There we go. So that's, um, that's the auto router. Ugh, this is not going so great. Do 
you have special rules for antenna traces? Um, well, you have to um, match the impedance, but that depends a lot on the frequency and the board thickness and whether you're doing two or three, two or four layer. Um, for me, since it's, um, this is going to be a, a two point, I mean, I think that might even be an impedance helper with this uh, Eagle Cat, I don't remember. But you can basically tell it like, hey, you know, make this trace uh, be whatever, usually 50 ohms um, between the uh, balen and the antenna. But you can also, you know, look at the data sheet. Usually they'll tell you hints. And then there's, there's calculators. If you like Google for trace impedance calculator, it'll, it, it's, it's not that complicated. You put the thickness of your PCB, where the ground plane is, and it tells you like, hey, you know, 50 ohm trace means yeah, 30 mil or something. I'm just going to, yes, put those there and fix them later. Getting there. Yeah, there's a lot of 3.3 volt lines. I'm gonna do this last. Okay, this is, these are those extra analog inputs. Let's see, it's ground, don't care about ground. D1, these are all done. Let's do Are the two crystals really right next to each other? Crystal, crystal. One, two, yeah, they are. Hmm, okay, well that actually does make it a little easier. You can just group these together. Okay. We'll do a little bit more and then take a break. And I'll finish this up tomorrow. We Okay. Well at least I got the crystals in a nice spot. Nice out of the way. And then this I'm going to Bring this to a via underneath, and then I'm going to do something with that power trace later. Ground, and now we're back to component lines. Have you ever heard of people using Sinotype and etching? No, I haven't. Yeah, I'm probably going to end up ripping this up and redoing it later. I can kind of tell I'm like not, I'm not like working myself into a bad spot, but I'm like, oh, this isn't like ideal. What I'm going to do is get everything as routed as possible. And then um, once I have an idea of like where the traces want to go, that's when I will redo it, which is pretty, com wait, there's no AREF? You're kidding. Shoot, they got rid of AREF? That's so lame. Man. Bummer. No AREF pin. Sad day. I don't know, I guess it'll do, I guess it's used for something. I mean, I'm assuming that the reason that the DAC is missing and AREF is missing and a couple of analog pins are missing is they're used to do some measurement or tuning. OK. 
Okay, so reset line will come out here. I'll have to definitely reroute this one. This capacitor should be close to the core. And I'll do that, but I'll do that later. Okay, now I'm getting to the components again. Yeah, so I'm kind of getting like the sense of like, okay, here's where things got to go. So like these traces here need to, need to snake through. So I'm going to have to um, pull these down here out of the way and then probably like make little divots here. And then of course later on I, I go through and I, I clean it up and I make these all nice and sized perfectly and, and do a DRC. But there's there's really no point in doing a DRC when you when you're first starting anyways. So bring these over here and then route them like that. the hang of it. So I might have to pull this up to give myself some space here. But like the idea is that just, you just want to get your, your non-intersecting planarness going on. Like this is running into this, but it's not crossing. As long as nothing's crossing, you have a, you know, you can always adjust later because you don't want to like spend all your time tweaking um, spacing to get this be like 10 mil and then it turns out like, oh, I need another trace. And then you have to like do the whole thing over again. Get everything planar and then you can move things in chunks. So like you can um, grab this whole piece and then say, oh, you know, I need to like move it up a little bit. And then you can, you can, you know, clean this up to make it perfect. So that's kind of the, the process, but let's see, how am I doing so far? 54 air wires, but let's get rid of the ground pads and then 26. So um, 54 air wires, 26 of which are signal lines. Not so bad. Um, I got 10 just here that are not going to be tough to do. Looks like, you know, I, I don't like to route with the ground um, fill in. Like, of course, at the end, I, you know, I, I, I put a ground fill in to, to fill all the traces. So I don't route the ground. Um, and, like, you can hide the ground lines. And I don't because I'm, I'm always worried I'm going to forget to unhide them or something. But... Um, I don't like to route with it because it's too busy, so I pull it out of the way like this. Just just hide it um, while I do my routing so I can, I can have the highest contrast. But then in the end, you pull this forward and then you can see, you can take a look and say, okay, where, where are my traces that I have to do? So like clearly like this chunk here. So then I can move these out of the way again and then I can concentrate on these because I know that like if I if I rip up like there's all these um, grounds like all of this is ground so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to I'm going to actually make a bottom 
VCC plane, I think. I'll kind of deal with it later. What's this? Oh, this is. You also have to get rid of all your little junk pieces. Okay, what are these? Are these real traces? Yes. And these are the USB data lines, and I can also clean these up and make them super adorable and parallel and all that good stuff later. This one's going to be annoying, but I'll figure out a way to, to route that later. OK, so let me take another look. OK, so 18. Some of these are some of these are power. This is like the VCC. Clear that. This is just needs a ground via. So just clone the via. Got rid of that. So this is all cleared out. <clears throat> okay, so I got most of the trace. It's not too bad. Like most of them kind of come out linearly. This is a little bit of a mess here. Could we organize the, the GPIO lines a little bit? There's not like a lot of options. I could also look to see if any of these are more parallel than I thought. Like I kind of looked at them and they all seem to be out of order. So it wasn't like, oh, if I rip up these two, I'll get a straight shot. It's kind of sad. And then you can always stick a via here. And then we'll stick a via here too. And then you can kind of follow where the vias need viaing. There you go. 14 air wires. This big capacitor can stick over here. Yeah, these these traces here, these crystals are all annoying. I can make some space by basically bumping everything up. Because I, I can't really use this space. I want to leave as much of it. I mean, I can, but I want to leave this cleared out as much as possible. So for these traces, um, I can bring this around and via under. Yeah, these three, these uh, SPI pins are annoying because they cut right through. And since you have these uh, top copper traces, it makes it a little bit of a, a log jam. This is going to collide, but I'll deal with it later. I'll, I'll move this trace out of the way. And then another via here. should be here and this should be huh oh, logic logic error this should be connected through the bottom plane but it isn't uh, eagle cat can't figure it out okay well i'm doing 45 minutes so i'll keep hacking on this and probably finish routing it tomorrow morning usually i like to take a break and then come back to it and look at it and like sometimes like something pops at me like oh you know i should totally have like ripped this trace up and then i can put four traces through instead 
But I think what I'm just going to do is take these from the top, go to the bottom, and then I might actually try to get rid of as much of this, um, these underlying blue wires as possible. If I, can, if I can get rid of these, or if I can get them going the other way, that'll like really save me a lot of effort. Because this is, this is kind of nice over here, but then these make it very difficult. And like, I don't want to have to snake these over and under four times. I, I could. I could also move everything up a little bit, like move this chip up, and then I can pass these through this way. And also, you know, I, I still have a ton of ground uh, bottom copper that's available. Okay, last question. Yeah. Are there any four-layer boards in, the pro in products in Native Fruit Store, or has everything been two layers to date? Everything has been two layers um, because I can almost always get it into two layers. Uh, one day that might not be true, but for now, um, it's two layer all the way, and uh, that just makes um, the pricing pretty good. Because like, if you can do two layer, you know your your boards cost a lot less than a four layer board, and also you 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 know you have better yields. I think I mean PCB yield. You don't really care because you 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 pay for the price, but um, you can get them faster. You can get prototypes a lot easier, and like there's no reason that I can't do this in two layers. Like I know that this can be done in two layers. Like you can even tell like there ain't. There's not a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of space over here that I'm not even utilizing that I could, I could push everything up and then move the crystals over and give myself a ton of room down here to get these last few traces. Um, you know, these are gonna go all underneath. This is gonna be, um, I might make a, a small uh, power um, pour underneath the chip. And then these traces are super easy. And then this whole area over here is done. You know, this is from the feather layout. This is like, this is good to go as is. It just needs a little bit of cleanup because, you know, there's, um, like, there's no AREF, so I have to get rid of the AREF capacitor. I don't know, use this, connect this to 3.3 volts or something, but, but it's actually not so bad. I've only got 11 air wires, and then if I just want to, like, cheat this, I'll, you know, do this up later. Um... I don't know why this is not connecting, but this should be connecting from whatever reason it's not. So I actually only have six wires. I mean, like, that's nothing really to do. Um, and then I just do some silk screen. And then, you know, I basically uh, add ground stitching. So, I mean, two layer board, this is totally, this could totally be done in two layers. Not worried about it. All right, that's kind of that's kind of what I got. I'm gonna wrap okay. this up. Yeah, it's funny. I'd like to finish it, but I kind of know that I'm gonna spend like probably another hour and a half just like pushing all these little things around to make those last six traces super clean. And then, uh, but I'll have this ready. I'll send this out for prototype. And uh, move this over. Okay. And that's and then it. It's a desk of. Yay! Of it's round. Um. This evening. Yeah, we'll do um, some more like engineering, engineering, but I wanted to uh, do some routing. Just, yeah. I'm really enjoying doing all these feather boards. Like, this is going to be now my, I think, like my 20th feather design. Mm -hmm. I'm sending out, you know, I'm getting three LED backpacks coming in soon. I got the two relay wings, I got the GPS wings. So it's like going to be 20 boards in the family. And this is a, a nice one because it's perfect. It's like, it's a 2.4 gigahertz radio. Um, it's nearly completely pin compatible with the Feather M0 um, USB bootloader. And like, you know, it's a little bit big. It can make, you know, of course, this whole thing could probably fit into a smaller space, but it's, you know, like it's a very nice compact size and you'll be able to use it with yeah. all of the accessories. You can have Bluetooth. You could do like a 802.15.4 to Wi-Fi bridge or 18, you know, or Zigbee to um, uh, Bluetooth or Zigbee to RFM 69 or LoRa radio, whatever party you want to, radio party you want to do. Okay, well that's Desolated. We'll probably be back uh, Thursday or this weekend for sure. And uh, we'll keep it up tomorrow is Ask an Engineer at 8 p.m. Eastern Time and show until 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 
looks like we'll be broadcasting from our manufacturing floor. Oh, so that's that's big deal. right. And uh, that's this is up. it's going to be all fresh. Yeah, and we're also, have a makeover. Check out. Um, the YouTube channel, I just uploaded a time-lapse 360, so that's a higher... Of what I was doing right here? Yeah. Okay. Um, I also, um, I need your help. Um, we can we can, uh, we can run PHP. We can do a PHP thing to the camera to make the sound thing happen. I know. That's you, Linux. I know. I know, know Linux. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> it's, we'll it's like the one thing I know. Yeah. I don't know Rust. I don't know um, Rails. Yeah. I don't know uh, Ruby. I, you know, I know Python barely. I don't know Haskell, but I... PHP I can do. I can yeah. do that. Okay. So um, I'll show you what I I'll show you what I, I gotta do. Okay, I'll do this thing. Okay. All right. All right well thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll yep. get back to I got some fun projects we're gonna start getting into when I'm uh, I'm high energy. We'll do I'm gonna have some fun hardware. We got some teardowns, yep. Internet of Things projects. Yep. All sorts of good stuff. We did should I grab the cat? Let's grab the cat. Yeah, I mean He's this, totally passed out. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah. I know, but sorry, cat. But you can, you can bring him over to one of the cameras. We need to monetize you. Yeah. All right. Adafruit is supported by you, the customer. We have no loans, no venture capital. Um, this cat requires food. So if you like electronics programming like this. Multi-dimensional cat. Yeah. I like make sure the Periscope pick, and Meerkat people pick, see. Pick up a pick up a kit. Pick up a kit. Pick up a cat. This cat's so tired. Yeah. We have to, you know, he eats a lot. He does. So uh, He converts it to sleep energy. He, yeah, he sleeps and he keeps us company. So, all right. Thank you for your support. We'll see you tomorrow. Later, Ask folks. Bye bye.